Hi folks, it's Larry Talks again. And as we promised, today we're going to talk about coming out in the gay world. But I must tell you, someone's been trying to fool with my email. So we ha had to change our email. It's larry.mormon at aol.com. L-A-R-R-Y dot mormon, M-O-O-R-M-A-N at aol.com. It's July 10th today, and there are a lot of other things I could talk about, like gun control, but it's just an American problem. I'm going to talk about coming out. Let's see, I came out in 1976, 86, 96, 06, 40 years ago, so I have a clue. And I can tell you things have really changed. The Internet is a blessing. I subscribe to two social programs that are gay, and um, the one I subscribe to is for older men. It's called SilverDaddies.com. Um, and I, boy, 250,000 people. <laughs> so do you think I can find out what's going on in the gay world that way? Okay, I want to make some observations about, uh, you know, I, I coming out for me is very strong memory, of course, how confused you are when, you know, you, say, you finally admit that you're gay and you want to date and get out in that world. Well, it's a totally strange world to you. And, you know, you think when you're coming out that they're like another thing which you don't know, which is true to a certain degree. It's taken me 40 years to learn some truths about the gay world. And I'm going to tell you what those truths are. And you never hear them on the media or, or anywhere. You have to learn this stuff. Number one, gays want to imitate heterosexuals. And, of course, it's a free country. <laughs> it's a free world. You can do that. But that's not where it's at. Well, it's where it's at for those who choose to. You know, they want to settle down, have a family, get married, and look like heterosexuals as much as possible. Uh, that's one option, but it's not the real option. And, you know, you say it's not natural. Well, what is natural? What does homosexuality relationships actually, actually, uh, what is natural about them? Well, number one, the Greeks put it up really well. They said it really well. They said the great thing about, and they didn't call it gay, because everybody was bisexual in Greece. I mean, it was just an option if you wanted to do it. There was no stigma to it at all because you were a male and male citizens could do anything they wanted, include, including, so we had a little trouble there with Skype. Now we're back again. Uh, so the, hetero, the heterosexual model is something a lot of gays like to follow, and that's fine. They, have, they want to have children. They want to imitate heterosexual marriage, but that's not natural. What is natural? The Greeks said it 2,000 years ago. Here's the way, here is the argument Plato gave. Or I don't know, maybe it, it's critics looking at the Greeks. The Greeks admired homosexuality because in a homosexual relationship, there's no babies. There's no family. There is only the relationship. There is nothing else. So it's a relationship about love. And what, the Greeks said, could be a higher thing of value than love. So if you love one another, that is that is what it's about. And that's quite natural. And that is the most important thing of all. Boy, gays have a real trouble with that. My experience is, and, and I would say that that is what is natural. And I think the Greeks had it right. They said, uh, gay, there is no such thing as gay. There's no such thing as homosexual. There's men doing whatever they want to do. And the highest form of love is to be in love with somebody and have no other agenda whatsoever. That's the trouble with marriage, heterosexual marriage. Is you, you, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I think children have a right to a stable family of, for 18 years, and that's a good thing. But the other option is the, a love relationship that is just about love. It's not about anything else. So that's the argument the Greeks gave for why. And that's, I do believe that's what it should be. That's what our goal should be. But it isn't. I'll tell you what our goal, after being on Internet for since 2000, and, I mean, and gay social groups for uh, since 2016 years, 
my conclusion is what gays actually choose, and I don't know that it's their fault, it's because the culture, a lot of this is that the culture puts you in a box and you're never quite comfortable. You go through adolescence, you're never comfortable, you can't have, I, I've met a few guys who actually dated like heterosexuals do, and had a wonderful relationship and grew up to be very versatile people. But it always shocked me on, on internet, gay internet, that you are you a top or a bottom? Hey, I was married for seven years. I had to do everything, and that's what's natural. You do everything. <laughs> I, 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 but but it's true. It, it, and so what? Ha here's here's my theory about this. I think it's very interesting that because our sexuality is so restrained by the society, we tend to become very introverted and uh, what you say self 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 occupied and the result of that is then as gay people we choose to have a very focused sexuality for example our fetishes do you like hairy men are you a top are you a bottom are you a trans dresser uh, and it amazes me when I read these profiles on the internet and I've read thousands and thousands. I get 10 contacts a day, and um, they'll say things uh, things like, um, I only want to do this and this and this and this and this and nothing else. And if you don't want to do those things, I don't want, don't bother to contact me. So the focus is totally on the sexuality. Totally. Can you imagine going a whole life? I remember kind of one of the saddest sex I ever had in my life. It stands out because he was a very handsome man. It was God, this was 20 years ago. And he was in San Francisco, and I made a date with this guy, and we had oral sex, and that was it. And I just got this sense that this guy was so isolated, and he would never do any more or less than what he had done. And that's where his life lay, and that's it. And so many gays, I would say, are stuck in that thing of it's all about sex. That, that's one theme that I see on the Internet. The other theme, 16 years <laughs> looking at it almost every day, um, is um, that, you know, I, I really don't understand this, but then this is a universal problem. Uh, I want, I want to, I'm monogamous and I want to be married. You know, on a first date, I don't want to hear that. <laughs> I, I don't mind you saying it. But I don't want to hear that, that that's your goal with me because you don't know me. You don't know anything about me. And it, you know, I, I have some wonderful, intimate friendships in my life. I am, I am never bored. I'm never lonely. I'm not sad. I have fulfillment. And the reason is you know, I'm open to those people who love me and whom I choose to love. And I'm capable of commitment and I connect with those people and it's family. I have family. And I'm a very happy guy because of that. But this thing of coming on right away, and of course heterosexuals do the same thing. I want to, I mean, I don't even contact these people because I don't want to, and I've had, a, <laughs> I've had terrible examples where I have a first date and have sex and the guy wants to marry me. What do you mean? You don't know anything about, I don't know anything about you. And I don't want to argue that kind of stuff, but so I, I just pass it by because it's crazy. It's, but then the Greeks said uh, Aphrodite is the goddess of love, and she drives all of us to madness. And and uh, she as is at work in the lives of everybody with her unconquerable will. That's eros. That's actually falling in love. But I never mistake. Then there's the third, the third thing. I think. What is a healthy gay attitude about sex? Well, my attitude is like eating a meal. It's it's not it's not not a life or death thing. As long as sex is safe, uh, and it's something you do uh, to enjoy yourself and help someone else enjoy themselves. That's my definition of sex. I think it's healthy. It's not. It's not all these words. Dirty. It's not sick. It's not. Uh, perverted. It's sharing pleasure with another person uh, uh, like you would share a meal. Does that mean you're going to get married? No. Why? Because to get married you have to know somebody. I mean really know them. I married 
when I was 29, after knowing this woman for five years, I think. And uh, we had a good marriage, and she got women's lib and wanted to divorce. And But I, she, I'm still very close to her. I see her. Uh, she phones me almost every day, and we become great friends. That friendship is what love is, real love. It has nothing to do with sex. That's my point of view. But the range, see, I think the challenge to gay people right now is for us to define what our sexuality means to us. Heterosexual has nothing to do with it. They're right. It's another ball game, you might say. And I have no problem with gays wanting to get married and have a family and imitate the heterosexual scene. If that's what you want, that's fine. But that's not what the nature of homosexuality is. The nature of homosexuality is for two uh, people to connect sexually, enjoy themselves. I mean, that's the most obvious thing going on with homosexuality. Uh, and then everybody wants to measure it by heterosexuality. But that's not, it's not the same thing at all. And it's neither good nor bad. But it's our obligation, I think, the, the obligation of gay people to define what homosexuality's goals are. And we're doing a very poor job of that because we're either imitating heterosexuality or, and then you love this, oh, there's sluts and whores and blah, blah. Uh, yes, for love. <laughs> What's wrong with that? I, as I say, I just see it, sex as like sitting down and having a meal. Well, heterosexuals don't want us to, to go there, but we have gone there. In fact, we're to the left of that. I mean, when I look at internet, we're to the left of that. Most guys, all you see is a penis, and they don't want to show you anything else. You never see their face online. I mean, I, I, that that doesn't attract me at all. But it's the most common thing you see on gay internet. It's not a bad thing, but I think what we need, what we want, is companionship. And I have to say this, in all the years that I've been on here, all this stuff of, oh, be good, they get in trouble on the internet, oh, God. I have never, ever had a bad experience. Never. Never had anybody insult me, do violence, uh, pretend to be something they're not. Never had a problem. Why? Because I am cautious. When there's 250,000 people to choose from on internet, what, I can afford to be pretty picky. And I am, and I, it always turns out well. So far, so good. 20 years of this. Um, so, um, what I'm saying, with the bottom line for me, is we, we as a group, and we're not doing a very good job of this, need to define what this, what our sexuality means to us. What is the meaning of it? And we don't see, I just don't see it. Uh, I have, but then I have, I can't say I've read a lot of gay manifestos. So, like, you know, I saw the great ones, uh, Harvey Milk, who was a wonderful example. Uh, but, you know, he's a politician. He, his love life was terrible. He never had what he wanted. Well, I could go on and on forever, and we're not going to do that. Maybe I should have a part two. I, uh, I'll think of other things I should say about this, because this is really important to us. It's really important. We have the obligation to define who and what sex means to us, and we're not doing it. And I'm not saying it's my job. It's a job of all of us. And, and not to give up all this giddiness about, oh, it's your sluts and whores and say what it is we really want it with sex, what it means to us. It doesn't mean the same thing that heterosexuality does. It doesn't. And to hide under that stuff is it leads to trouble. I think just trouble. Um, it's much better. All the only advice I can give, and I'm really good at this. <laughs> I can I can detect shit, but I can detect Donald Trump like stuff anytime. <laughs> so I've never gotten in trouble because I know when someone's lying. And so, what's the answer? How do you get through all this? You tell the truth, your truth. You never lie. You never tell. You never present yourself as being a couple or something when you're not. Or uh, as not being married when you are married, and so on. Honesty is the best, not only the best policy, it's the best way to find love. My best friend lives 5,000 miles from me, but you know what? He's, I've never caught him in a lie in 11 years that I've known him, never. And that's the draw. 
the draw is I can trust this person totally. And it's a wonderful thing to be in a world, and it's true of my ex-wife too, and, and all, all those people I'm close to, is I can trust what they say, and I detect that, and, and you know, how long does it take to get to know somebody to be at that level. That's where love starts. Love starts when you have created a bond of trust, a real bond of trust with someone who you like. And uh, that's that's my advice to you if you're honest. And I hear so many gays complain, well, he lied to me right off. Well, then you're never going to get it. Let me tell you, you're never going to get anywhere. And uh, so I feel quite secure on internet. There's nothing wrong with internet if you if you don't lie, <laughs> tell the truth, say what you want, and you will get it. It'll take a while. Oh, it takes a long time. Uh, you have to be patient. That's my great virtue is patience. I'm in no hurry. There's 250,000 men every day. I get 10 hits. I can deal with it. Uh, so remember now, I changed our our our. Uh, email address l-a-r-r-y dot mormon m-o-o-r-m-a-n um, so honesty is a good thing and that's what we need more and more we also though need as gay people to define what the meaning of sexuality is for ourselves I, I think we do a pretty good job as individuals but I think we need to go beyond the oh it's just a, a lot of fun to what it what does it mean to us where does it fit and why isn't uh why don't we behave like heterosexuals and the answer is because we're not doing a heterosexual thing we're doing something else and that something else is normal and good and healthy and fulfilling but we have to be honest about it and we have to do you know i think in the next generation we will do a better job of defining what sex means to gay people so that's it <laughs> I know I went over 10 minutes, but this is good stuff. <laughs>